Why do we care about uh, recurrent laryngeal nerve injury? And we know it can cause temporary or permanent focal paralysis, which can cause morbidity for the patient in terms of voice outcomes, uh, aspiration risk, dysphagia. But patients don't always complain of hoarseness when they come back to you to see you postoperatively after thyroidectomy. With studies showing a good percentage of these patients with nerve injury uh, who don't complain of voice problems at their postoperative visit. The potential for morbidity remains, however, highlighted by some studies that have showed higher rates of things like lower respiratory tract infection and rehospitalization, and otherwise low risk, low morbidity patients who underwent thyroidectomy. We published a consensus statement from the American End Neck Society back in 2020 on immediate and partial neural dysfunction after thyroid and parathyroid surgery which really served to help highlight the under-recognized but important potential morbidity associated with unilateral vocal paralysis or also milder partial laryngeal dysfunction in the immediate postoperative period. This helped to further highlight the need for a lower threshold for postoperative laryngeal evaluation for patients and really recognize the benefits of early treatment for these patients. This doesn't even touch on the potential medical legal impact from RLN injuries, right, which remain the leading cause of litigation uh, after thyroidectomy. Historical reliance on that single patient complaint of hoarseness post-op as the only means for detecting a nerve injury not only misses those patients who display different or more subtle symptoms, but it also clearly misses those significant numbers of patients who are asymptomatic. It's not surprising in the setting that the true incidence of nerve injury really is unknown and likely significantly underreported. 